Alex Polizzi is an award-winning hotelier with over 20 years' experience of working in the world's most luxurious hotels. Born into the legendary Forte Hotel dynasty, she's on a crusade to transform Britain's most desperate hotels and B&Bs. From outrageous owners... My food is the best you'll find probably in the north of England. You've got Thai fish cakes, you've got Chinese... Is that a bad thing? Yes, I think it is. ...to dodgy decor... I feel like I'm in someone's womb. Nothing escapes the hotel inspector's beady eye. Oh, the glamour. Oh, the glamour of it all. Or her quest for perfection. I found dirty carpets, darling. That is nonsense. It's, it, that is absolutely well, nonsense. Well, I know, but you're living in a fantasy world. Your average room rate is pathetic. Mm. This week, the hotel inspector has an art attack. <gasps> everything is filthy. Maybe it's my age. I find these things OK. He's got an excuse for everything. He's got an explanation for everything. It's controversial. You're obviously quite incensed about the whole room. It's absolutely filthy. You'll be surprised how many people do like it. I think anybody can run a hotel. I'm really struggling with this as an idea. The artist residence in Brighton, a nine-bedroom B&B run by 21-year-old full-time student, Justin Salisbury. Hello, artist residence. The seaside hotel was bought by Justin's mother, who planned to run it herself. But a serious accident left her incapacitated and the business in trouble. Things were very bad. When they took out the lease on this, you know, it cost a fair amount of money. You couldn't just leave it dormant. Dutiful son Justin stepped into the breach, bringing with him a radical plan to save the family business. The aim is to create an environment which is full of art in every single way. He created a unique art hotel, decorated and staffed by up-and-coming young artists. Um, yeah, that's great. And um, when would you be checking in? Um, yeah, in return for their in? services, they get accommodation at the hotel, a small wage, and the freedom to be creative. They live here and they work here. They can use the space, you know, to do whatever they need to do, as long as we can operate the hotel. During the week, the artists are left to fend for themselves, while Justin studies for a business degree in London, only putting in an appearance at weekends. But after one year's trading, his business plan is looking decidedly sketchy. I almost had to stop doing this business. The hotel has been running at a loss. The hotel has been slammed by guests, describing it as worse than a squat, a disaster, and labelling it the worst hotel in Brighton. Not surprisingly, occupancy levels are dismal. Near zero, basically. It's just about staying alive, really. There's, there's so much stuff at stake here. The family business is hanging by a thread. The artist residence is in desperate need of a renaissance. In a last bid for survival, Justin has called on the hotel inspector. Alex Polizzi has run some of the most exclusive establishments in the world. But turning this fledgling business around won't be easy. First impressions are not great. It's pretty grubby. The glass on the front door is absolutely dingy. It's filthy. Then you've got this truly repulsive, elongated heads. There is also a flying squirrel who looks as if he's in extreme pain. That has got to go. I mean, I would look at that and turn and flee if I was coming to check in here. The entrance is less than entrancing a world away from the boutique hotel that the artist residence aspires to be. Justin. Hi. Alex, nice, nice to meet you. Come in, please. Thank you, thank you so much. To really understand what's dragging the hotel down, 
Alex will stay the night. The hotel has a gallery space that doubles as a breakfast room and nine ensuite bedrooms, which have all been individually designed by a different artist. Can I help you with your bag, please? Thank you. Lovely. What's your impressions? Quite overwhelming, actually. OK. Alex is booked into room five, a double priced at £80 a night. Thank you. This is our original uh, artist-inspired bedroom. OK. Very interesting. Says me, not quite sure what to say. <laughs> this goes against every kind of basic rule of hotel rooms, which is that they should be calming. But um, you'll be surprised how many people do like it. It's certainly interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Here's your key. Thank you. Take it. <laughs> Actually, the art has very little to do about why I find the room unacceptable. The furniture has nothing to do with anything that's on the walls, and so there are these collection of disparate objects. I mean, I mean, who on earth thinks that this is a good idea with that on the walls? What on earth is that bottle with shells on doing on that chair? The curtains, floral curtains in this very modernist room, and these repulsive Egyptian cushions. I'm really struggling with this as an idea. The medley of junk and mismatched furniture is upstaging the art. As Alex probes deeper, she finds a similar story. These things just do not belong together, and that is what's upsetting. It feels that no one with any eye has actually made any effort to make it harmonious. The artist residence website promises a boutique hotel experience. But so far, Alex has found it's failed to live up to its billing. Well, this room looks half finished. It is, however, actually a letting room. Once again, you've got a completely inappropriate bedspread. <sighs> Everywhere looks slightly dirty, slightly tacky. I mean, look at that light. It's absolutely filthy. Well, if he was selling the rooms for 15 quid a night and so young teenage runaways could stay here, I'm sure they'd be perfectly happy. But that is not the market that he's appealing to. <sighs> what else can I say? On your website, you mentioned the word boutique three times. That's not the impression I got. Certainly, as a hotelier, it would not be what I consider to be boutique. But I think if you ask the average person that goes to stay in a hotel once in a while, if you ask them the definition of boutique hotel, I think they would just think it's a hotel that's slightly different. No, they model. wouldn't. No? They would think it's an extremely top-end environment. People expect a certain level of cleanliness, hospitality, of course friendliness, but I think that you should not call yourself a boutique hotel because you're immediately disappointing people the moment that they walk through that front door. As the light drains from the brightened sky, so does Alex's confidence in Justin. Justin just isn't capable of doing this. He thinks he has this great, wonderful concept, but he hasn't been able to execute it properly. Don't even get me started on the boutique hotel tag. I don't think that people would even want to spend £20 a night to stay here. There is no guiding principle, and that is what every hotel needs. But Alex is about to discover the picture is even grimmer than she thought. That's so monkey, it's real disrespect of a paying guest. You're obviously quite incensed about the whole room. This feels very much like a student flat. At the moment, I don't think you're being a very good patron of the arts or a very good hotelier. The Artist Residence, a once traditional B&B on the Brighton seafront. 21-year-old student Justin Salisbury leapt to the rescue of the struggling family-owned hotel after his mother had a serious accident. No artist residence. I can't actually help you with that because we haven't uploaded the system. But his radical plan to save the business by turning it into a trendy art hotel, staffed entirely by live-in artists, is backfiring badly. Can you put them somewhere better? The artist residence has been described as the worst hotel in Brighton, and occupancy rates are dire. 
and it's more of actually trying to get anyone in. I almost had to stop doing this business. Things were very bad. Justin is counting on award-winning hotelier Alex Polizzi to help him revive the family fortunes. There's, there's so much stuff at stake here. It's just about staying alive, really. She's discovered a hotel that's more dirty than arty. Look at that light. It's absolutely filthy. I'm really struggling with this as an idea. After a night's sleep in room five, Alex is even more convinced that Justin's art hotel isn't worthy of the name. Woke up this morning and I thought I would make myself a cup of tea. However, when faced with this, I decided against it. That's so monkey. This isn't just lack of housekeeping, it's real disrespect of a paying guest who comes into this room. Next on the agenda, Alex will sample breakfast served in the ground floor public space intended to double as an art gallery. This here is our Kandinsky inspired breakfast. As you may all know, Kandinsky is a very famous artist and uh, he lived off tea and toast and cereal. Generally, I think people in my age category, i.e. the 20s, they prefer to come down, you know, make some toast, have some cereal and have nothing really too spectacular. But it seems the guests disagree. The minimalist breakfast has been described as rubbish and derisory. So this is the Kandinsky-inspired breakfast, which seems to mean very cheap supermarket bread. It's a few canisters of cereals, orange juice, help yourself to tea and coffee. I must say, I would think that most people who come to Brighton would expect a bit more than this, especially if they're paying £80 a room. Alex has seen enough. Eating bread like this is like eating air. It's time to confront Justin with a few home truths. If she can have her opinion, that's fine. If she doesn't like something, that's fine by me. But I will uh, defend the artist's corner with all my might. The epicentre of Alex's discontent is one of the £80 a night rooms, so she drags Justin there to read him the riot act. Right, well, the first thing I have to say to you is, actually, I think it's quite a nice idea. It's a shame you're doing it so bloody badly. I have no problem at all with the actual art. I have a problem with the fact that you're trying to combine that art with these cupboards. I have a problem with that repulsive shell bottle there, the mask that's down on the floor, with the fact that you have these kind of floral curtains that look like they belong in a bedsit. Look, I mean, you know, you've got half a... <laughs> Half a wardrobe down here, a little bit of coving down there. This is all falling apart. Yep. The bloody lights don't work. I haven't had a lot of money to spend on this. It's been on what I've earned, I've managed to spend. So I think based on what, you know, the budget I've had, I think it's OK. But there's such discord in this room that actually this feels very much like a student flat. I, I have no argument with the art, actually. I just think you're doing the art a disservice and I think you're doing the artists a disservice. Well, um, I disagree that I'm doing them a disservice at all, really, because um, it's controversial. You're obviously quite incensed about the whole room, and um, that's the aim as well. There's a certain amount of um, controversy that I want to build up in people staying here. This is just lazy. This isn't yeah, controversial, This, this, is, this is what we're talking about is uh, practically wise fixing the few bits that are broken in here. If you're going to make this concept work, it has to be much sharper. Justin has a steady stream of excuses. I hate all this. But Alex is determined to break through. Opinion. OK, this room, which has so many nice elements, it's really frustrating because, obviously, there's been some thought that has gone into it, but actually in a really slapdash kind of careless way. Mm. You've got that tiny lampshade on that rather nice lamp base with a red light in it. The light in the bathroom doesn't work. Everything is filthy. It's difficult for me doing full-time student and coming in to check the petty things. 
I'm sure you agree you with me. You keep saying that it's difficult being a full-time no, student. It, it is, though. Maybe, it then, does, maybe the whole concept doesn't work. More than that, you're quite laid back, but someone here has to not be laid back. Someone has to be on top of it. If you stayed in any of these rooms, I absolutely guarantee that you would find that light bloody mm. annoying. Maybe it's my age, because people my age, I find these things OK. The excuses keep on coming. Alex has her work cut out if she's going to make Justin see the light. Next, she wants to tackle the so-called Kandinsky breakfast. It's a real insult to call it a Kandinsky-inspired breakfast. I think mm. you should be calling it artists starving in a garret breakfast, and at least so you've got a sense <laughs> of humour. Yeah. Yeah? I have no problem with it only being continental, but then if you do, the elements have to be good. Why have you got the cheapest supermarket sliced bread? It's easy enough to have pan au chocolat or something crusty, something that shows that you give a bit of a damn about people who are paying 80 quid a night having their breakfast. A very good option is that you could do, like, breakfast in a bag, and it's delivered to your room and you have a croissant in it and an, an apple or a banana and a can of juice. And try and be a bit more conceptual about it. This is just a bit shoddy, isn't it? It is, it is, I agree. The um, paper bag idea is very good, actually. You like that? Yeah, definitely, definitely. Another blot on the hotel's landscape is the confused and chaotic frontage. So, I've brought you out the front because I think you're sending a lot of mixed messages. It doesn't look like somewhere funky. You've got those kind of bamboo blinds. You also see that nasty terracotta thing, which looks like it's just been kicked in the nuts. And you've got one chance, that first chance to impress people, and I think you're missing it. Justin has painted himself into a corner, creating a hotel that appeals neither to the art crowd nor the regular Brighton traveller. Alex has a three-point plan to bring the business back from the brink. I really like your concept of the hotel, and I think it's got huge potential. But that's why I got so angry and so frustrated with you. To improve what you're offering, we have to look at three quite distinct areas. First of all is the coherence of the whole. So that means you deciding whether you are a kind of art hotel and making a few value judgments about the stuff that's lying around and editing stuff down. I think you need to look at every room as if it's a kind of installation by an artist. The second thing is I think you need to be assuming the mantle of the person in charge, taking responsibility for some of the things that are here. So I think that when you come, you do need to check the rooms. You need to see what maintenance needs doing. Finally, I want you to do some research into breakfast. You know, Brighton is an incredibly hip and happening place and you've got amazing suppliers here. Mm. And I think you're letting yourself down dramatically on your breakfast, OK? At the moment, I don't think you're being a very good patron of the arts or a very good hotelier. Sure. Does that sound fair? Sounds extremely fair, yeah. Just need to try a bit harder with everything. For me, the hotel side of things, I think anybody can run a hotel, but to run a really good hotel is extremely difficult. But I have been doing this only one year. I am 21. So I think, as such, it's more of a fine-tuning job. I think Justin needs a rocket up his ass. The fact that he's only 21 just doesn't wash with me. I suppose I've realised that what I really have to do is turn the boy Justin into a man. If Justin is going to get a master's from the University of Polizzi, you'll need to raise the bar significantly. Lesson one, a field trip. Brighton's Hotel Pelirocco, run by business partners Mick Robinson and Jane Slater, is a themed hotel aimed at an urban market similar to the one Justin craves. Well, we've got 19 rooms. And there's Betty's Boudoir, dedicated to Betty Page, the 50s pinup, and Modrophenia. Uh, which is uh, themed around the film Quadrophenia and, and Mods, obviously, famous in Brighton. It also happens to be situated in the exact same square as the artist residence. If Justin wants his concept to work, he's got to overcome some stiff competition on his doorstep. Alex wants him to study two things, the conceptual design of the rooms and the fundamental rules of good housekeeping. So this is the latest room that's been um, 
redesigned at the hotel. It's designed by some girls from Brighton called Ophelia Fancy. Uh, we don't just give them free reign, but they have a list of things that there has Brief. to be bedside tables, for example, there has to be a tea and coffee making area, because sort of hotel standards, there are certain minimums that you have to adhere to. Sure. And so we, we, we do have the final say. So were there any moments when they said, I like this, and you're like, oh no. Yeah, yeah, no, there have been, been some of those yeah. moments. Because yeah, right? totally. there has to be, yeah, a final say, ultimately. And sometimes we give a little yeah. bit here and there. That's probably what you need a bit more, isn't it? The final yeah, say. Yeah, I think so, yeah. yeah. This is the Jamie Reed magic room. This ties in with the artist's uh, stuff that you're doing, because Jamie Reed was a famous artist in the punk era. You have to get the basics right, and we like to always keep a very high standard of cleanliness, and I think that's essential. And this is like a housekeeper's job description, how you clean a room, and there's a certain order you do it in. And then, after it, they've been cleaned, the head housekeeper then rechecks everything, from sure. the skirting boards to the way the bed's been made, and only once they've done that will the head housekeeper sign it. Definitely It's, it's works. not just like cleaning your bedroom at home. Exactly. I mean, that's why this hotel works, you know. Mm, the detail. Yeah. It's an eye-opener for Justin, who's beginning to realise there's a lot more to running a hotel than just sitting back and letting it happen. So, you know, boring stuff is stuck in my head, really. Stuff like having proper systems in place with the laundry and the cleaning rotor. You know, it's things like that that really make a good hotel. I'm going to be checking the rooms every time I come down. So, yeah, it does start from the, from the top. So can Justin step up and become a real hotelier? Or will he continue to hide behind a wall of excuses? There hasn't really been any change. I think you should be impressed. I'm not massively impressed by how filthy the glass is in your front door. I'm very nervous that Justin is now going to try and bluff his way through this meeting. Right. So what do you think of this space? Crap. <laughs> <laughs> you can't call it an art hotel. Mm -hmm. You really, really can't. The artist residence in Brighton is run by 21-year-old business student Justin Salisbury and staffed by a bunch of live-in artists. But the nine-bedroom art hotel come gallery isn't a pretty picture, and after only a year of trading, its days could already be numbered. The hotel has been running at a loss. It's just about staying alive, really. With the business in peril, Justin has turned to expert hotelier Alex Polizzi for help. She's discovered that when it comes to running a professional hotel, Justin doesn't know his art from his elbow. Today, Alex is back in Brighton to check on developments. She'd left instructions to improve three key areas of the hotel. The finish in the rooms, the uninspiring breakfast, and Justin's management skills. Well, I'm pretty amazed that he hasn't bothered to clean the glass yet. It's absolutely filthy. You can barely see in. There hasn't really been any change. And I was hoping that I was going to see a really big difference when I came here, but I certainly don't. Justin. Hello. How are Come you? In. Come Thank in. you. So how's everything been in general? Yeah, well, I've taken a lot of what you've said on board. Yeah. So I think you should be impressed. OK. Um, I'm not massively impressed by how filthy the glass is in your front door. But it is a very torrid day today, weather-wise. So. It would put me yeah. off walking in. Yeah, and, uh, and as I said, it's a work in progress. Um, I see you've got some stuff out here for me to have a look at. Do you want to talk me through it? OK, well, uh, we're going to take on the idea of the breakfast in a bag. Um, so the idea was that they would have a selection of either apple juice or orange juice. Yeah. And um, possibly we're looking at some sort of granola or some kind of nutty snack that people would generally like seeds. At least you've really thought about this. I'm very pleased. There is healthy progress, but the breakfast bag is missing a treat. A few minutes' stroll from the hotel is one of Brighton's most popular bakeries. Alex has arranged a sampling session of some of their freshly baked pastries. Let's try a pan of chocolate, shall we? Mmm. Okay. I think that's good, really good. I think it's very good, yeah. I'm not sure what this is. Mm. That's quite a good option. 
Mm. It's like an apple turnover. Yeah. Mmm. That's really good. Mmm. Mmm. And no one given a good juice, a pastry, and a bar and a good coffee is going to think that they've been hard done by at breakfast, are they? Well, it sure beats our current breakfast. <laughs> Delicious. There's the sweet smell of success. But attention now turns to an even stickier subject. So when you went to the Pella Rocco, they gave you a cleaning routine that they use, and they also talked to you about how they manage the checking of the rooms. Did you find that helpful? Uh, yes, of course, because previously we didn't have anything like that at all. So now, I mean, we, we just follow exactly what they do, and it's working reasonably well. OK, just from here I can see, Dale, that, you know, this definitely needs attention. There's hoovering that needs doing. No, I mean, you know, what? Well, I don't even know whether this room's actually finished yet because um, I, we haven't seen the sheet. Another day, another excuse. While there have been inroads with the breakfast, Justin has failed to address the more pressing issue of the rooms. Alex wants to see more urgency. The rate of change is glacial, and I think at this point now, you know, if we're going to achieve what I really want to, you've got to get everyone signed up. On my side, I'm going to arrange for a local artist to come in and do one of your rooms. I would like you to be able to see what a properly finished room should look like. Sure. On your side of things, however, I feel incredibly strongly that you have got to start tackling some of the schlock that's about. I've put myself on the line and I've asked a leading professional in the art curating world to come here and to give you some advice. I don't want her to turn up and think that this looks like a bedsit. Mm. Yeah? When is she arriving? Within the next couple of weeks. There's still so much to do here at the artist's residence, and I don't think that Justin still completely grasps the scale of the change that I'm asking of him. I don't think any business can continue to fail as miserably as this one's doing. It's failing as a hotel, and it's also failing as an art gallery. And Justin has now got to really pull his finger out and make sure that things happen a bit more quickly. So success or failure, it's up to him. The hotel inspector's plan is to commandeer two rooms and provide Justin with a blueprint to roll out across the rest of the hotel. Alex has drafted in a local Brighton artist to redesign room eight. She's hoping a refit of room eight and room five will act as a template to show Justin the level of finish required. While Alex's team work on the new rooms, Justin at last appears to be adopting a more business-like approach. She wants this place to be better, you know, and so do I. So she's told me what we need to do, and I think we should uh, respond to that in the right manner. He's coming down more regularly and things like that, so we get to, it's more hands-on. Hello, artist residents. The staff are getting stuck into the breakfast bags. And Justin has employed a handyman to get to grips with the very long list of maintenance jobs. Start on the ground level. I'm slowly working my way to the top, so I'll end up in heaven, effectively, or hell, <laughs> depending on how it goes. The finishing touches are being applied to the two new rooms. Alex has elected to use simple white furniture, a neutral foil to the busy artwork. Today, Alex is back to see the changes for herself. So, one month ago, Dreadful. Breakfast, derisory. Just the other day, brilliant, great atmosphere, lovely rooms, and love the breakfast bags. So we're getting something right at last. Hi. How are you? I'm good, thank you. I like the comment in your book about the breakfast. No, it's good news, isn't it? It's a huge contrast to what it was before. Probably the worst breakfast in Brighton. <laughs> With the breakfast bags officially a success, Alex is anxious to see the new rooms. Room 5 was once a mumbo-jumbo of vibrant art, clashing with oriental furniture and Egyptian cushions. 
Now it allows the art to breathe, but still provides guests with the level of comfort they'd expect from an 80 pound room. Great, this looks so much better. Are you pleased with it? I am pleased, I am pleased, yeah. Well, all, I mean, all of this furniture really accentuates the art and you, know, you don't want to distract it. So, yeah, I've learned. It's a good template, anyway, for the other rooms. I think I've stayed true to your concept, but, you know, just lifting it, make it a bit more grown up. Mm. <laughs> yeah? Yeah, yeah. OK. Room 5 has received the thumbs up, but how will the brave new world of Room 8 fare? The room has gone from dingy and dishevelled to a light and airy space, complete with its own bespoke wall painting of the Brighton seafront. The white furniture complements the art, giving the room a fresh and contemporary feel. Wow. Well, I think this is more like it. Hmm. I really, really love this. I'm really happy. I mean, he's used the space very well. Out there, it looks straight onto the pier. Yeah. And, you know, it looks like it's joining in with the actual room. So, I mean, he's really thought about it. But, you know, who wouldn't like sleeping in this room? I mean, it's really high quality. Now the hotel side of the operation is finally falling into place, it's time to tackle the other problem child, the gallery. Justin has made no attempt to curate any aspect of the art. Anyone who wants to can come and put their pieces up or paint over something, or I mean, it's very haphazard. Alex has called on renowned curators art-wise to give Justin some professional advice. Susie Allen and Deanna Vanagan have curated exhibitions in some of the country's leading galleries. I'm very nervous that Justin is now going to try and bluff his way through this next meeting. However, I'm hoping that it's going to give him the shake-up that he really needs and that he takes this opportunity to embrace the criticism and not find excuses and not find explanations and just shut up, take it like a man and say that he'll do better in the future. We'll have to find out from him if this is a serious business, because if it's a serious business, then we can potentially help. If it's not serious, it's wasting our time actually doing anything with him. So as not to colour the experts' opinions, Alex has left Justin to fend for himself. So this is the gallery here. Aha, uh -huh, OK. What do you think of it? I mean, my first impression from it, yeah. I have to be very honest with you here, is it's a bit higgledy-piggledy. There just seems um, to be too much going on, everything from sort of the mouldings to the mirrors to the sort of partition of the wall ending to the, it just sort of, there's, there's quite a lot that the work on the walls is competing with. It's a very small space, mm. so you need to make the most of it, really. Okay. Can I just ask you what you think about the room? Uh, I think you're asking the wrong person, really. Do you go around galleries much? <laughs> I try to, but uh, I, I've, I'd say I've got the standard, you know, average person's art knowledge. It, <laughs> it's really not good enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it really, really isn't good enough. Mm. And you need to be able to up the ante. You can't call it an art hotel. Mm. You mm. really, really can't. Right, so what do you think of this space? Crap. <laughs> <laughs> there, there's absolutely no consistency. I mean, it, it's sort of, I, I just feel completely sort of over, overloaded. Everything about it is awful. Really, if you, I mean, I think it would be much better if you absolutely had nothing here. Well, think minimal. It, it's very clear that he's just not sure what he's doing. In, in any sense of the word, he needs to sort of professionalise his approach. I mean, it's a disaster land, to be quite honest, in there. He's got to clear everything. He's actually got to start really from scratch, but he's got a long way to go he's before that. He's got incredible amounts of work to do. How did it go with Deanna and Susie? Were they very critical? Yes, they were extremely <laughs> critical, but, I mean, quite right, too. I mean, I'm not doing the artwork much justice, let's be honest, which has got to change, and it yeah. will, straight away. OK, because I'm going to challenge you to put on a good private view. I want to get a kind of buzz going about the artist's residence, which will help you in time for next season. Yeah? Does yeah. that make sense? It does completely, yeah. So what's the time frame of this You've challenge? You've got a month. One month? Yeah. The private view will provide a vital opportunity to build the artist residence's reputation as a hotel and a credible art venue. It's a make or break event and Alex is leaving Justin with a lot on his plate. 
She's still not convinced he's man enough for the job. I would like to see a bit more trepidation. I would like to see a bit more anxiety. You know, he is his usual suave, charming self, and I need more than that from him. I need to see some guts. For me, it's just a learning experience, and I think people will see that it's a work in progress. I think adults should be encouraged to help young people try and do something like this. Because at the end of the day, I mean, we've had a lot of criticism, but we are just a group of young people. All of us are under 25, and we're just trying to do something and make something work. So will Justin unveil a masterpiece or merely make an exhibition of himself? He has got to sell his plate. He's got to be professional. Go! <gasps> I'm not entirely sure that he's capable of doing this. Here, at this moment, you're the proprietor of a hotel. Yeah. So I'm not interested in your student life. Over the past four months, hotel inspector Alex Polizzi has been trying to drag the artist residence, a B&B &B in Brighton, from clumsy to cutting edge. She set a template for how 21-year-old manager Justin should furnish his unique rooms. This is more like it. Hmm. And called in expert curators to help him tackle his mess of a gallery space. Crap, just everything about it is awful. Now, Alex has arranged a major private view of a new exhibition to draw attention to his unusual gallery-come-hotel concept. But she's worried the 21-year-old student won't have pulled his finger out in time. I want him to grow balls, basically. And if he's going to make this an art hotel, to make it a bloody good one. If Justin can get his act together, the event could put the hotel on the map making it the destination of choice for any art lover. Alex has also invited a writer from the Lonely Planet Guide, just the sort of publication that could make a massive difference to Justin's pitiful occupancy rates. Today, Alex is back to make sure the night goes right. I'm never confident with Justin that he's going to do what I ask of him. He's quite a slippery customer to deal with. Today's really important, and I don't want Justin to fall flat on his face, but it's really up to him whether this succeeds or not. Well, this looks better. In the stairwells, Justin has taken the curator's advice, stripping out the crowded cacophony, converting it to a blank canvas that gives the art rooms beyond far greater impact. So maybe Justin has listened after all. I can't wait to see the rest of it. Wow. This now looks like a proper exhibition space. Downstairs has been transformed from untidy breakfast room filled with badly hung art to a spacious and professional gallery. It's so exciting. I can't believe it. Hi. Oh, this is so exciting. I know it is, isn't it? I'm really, really impressed. I wasn't sure whether you were actually going to do everything that you said you would, but you've pulled it out of the bag. And Justin has another surprise for Alex. Using her work as a template, he's made his own changes to room one, turning it from sketchy patchwork to sleek and unique. Wow! This is it's what we did when you were Fabulous! I can't believe it, darling. It looks great. Just looks fab, Dustin. Dustin, I'm going to kiss you. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well done. <laughs> Thank you so much. Really well done. The decor is impressive, but as the critical private view approaches, Alex's positivity... Come in, come in. ...rapidly right, turns right. to frustration. Where can we put coats, Dustin, darling? Alex feels Justin is taking a typically laid-back attitude to the most important aspect of good hoteling, the service. Two of you here, please, asking what people would like to drink and serving it. Thank you. And it's driving her to distraction. <laughs> Time the young upstart got a pep talk. This is really important. You know, here, at this moment, you're the proprietor of a hotel. Yeah. I'm not interested in your student life. This is you in a professional That's capacity. Fine. No faffing, just be very incisive. OK, yeah, I understand. OK. 
Justin must raise his game substantially if he's going to sell his hotel to the RT Glitterati. Among the invited guests are the curators from Artwise. The last time they saw the hotel, they were fiercely critical. Hello. Hello, Hello Alice. Alice. Wow, what a transformation. Could it change? It's a very full house, and Alex is doing her bit to sell the hotel concept and generate Justin some much needed business. What do you think? Fantastic, yeah. yeah. And definitely in the fringe, it will make a brilliant venue. Yeah. Great, that's very positive. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. But the big turnout has left Justin overwhelmed. <laughs> Too many people there. <laughs> so busy. And ineffective. Very nice, There's a lot of people. You have to go up and say, I'm Justin, this is my hotel. Yeah. He has got to sell his place. He's got to be charming. He's got to be professional. I'm not entirely sure that he's capable of doing this. If he's not, then he's going to fall flat on his face and it'll be very embarrassing for all of us. Thankfully, Justin begins to rise to the occasion. Have a look around and uh, let us know what you think as well. Well, my name's Justin. Justin, Justin yeah. Okay, Justin. And starts plugging his product. Take care and have a drink. Sir. Okay, cool. Yeah, she <laughs> does, mate. We actually have some open, uh, open rooms as well. The art set seems suitably impressed. You've actually got some really important artists hanging here. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's incredible. <laughs> you know, the concept's just different, you know, having different themed rooms and stuff like that. <laughs> it's the wild and wonderful <laughs> cookie room. That's really good. Yeah. Beautiful. I think it's just brilliant to be able to sleep in a comfortable bed in a room that's also like waking up in sort of the Tate Modern. Everyone I've talked to so far has been very positive. Um, Some shakers and movers in Brighton who are incredibly enthusiastic. But there's one visitor who might be harder to please. Karina Miller writes for the travel publisher Lonely Planet and as such will have her eye clearly on the hotel side of the business. So will the artist residence get her seal of approval? Do you think this is the kind of hotel that could feature in a Lonely Planet publication? The three rooms I saw are very professional, um, very unique. The breakfast sounds fantastic, level of comfort is really good. We're always looking for places that are unique and special. This definitely fits into those categories. If I were reviewing, I would definitely try and fit it in. That's fantastic, thank you so much. It had a shaky start but the event has been a roaring success. What do you think? Well, there's a lot of people. <laughs> you don't look very happy about that. No, I, am, I know. I'm very, very happy that all these people have come to see the hotel. It's great for publicity. They can see all the bedrooms, see what our exhibitions are about. For the purpose that we had, which was to introduce the new revived artist mm. residence, this has worked perfectly because what we wanted to do was show everybody that a leaf has turned. Yeah. And this is the new you. I never thought when I first came and visited here that I'd be walking out of here with a big smile on my face, <laughs> but I am. Thank you so much. <laughs> the artist residence as a place to stay is now transformed. And I think that everyone involved in it now has a much clearer idea how to go forward with it as a success. So that is what we set out to achieve, and we've done it. Alex has left a very lasting impression on this place. I've accepted I can't keep on making excuses. And I just feel like now it's going from strength to strength. And it's something that I can really you know, hold my head up proud about. Two months later, Justin has gone on to refurbish all of the bedrooms. Bookings have risen dramatically, and the artist residence has gone from being slated by guests to receiving glowing five-star reviews.